Karnataka. And I want to just focus on Karnataka a minute because in my opening remarks in the presence of the ministers, just think about what we've done here in Karnataka in the last 20 years. ISRO, Wipro, DRDO, Texas Instruments, HAL, IBM, Cisco, Barat Electronics, Infosys, GE, Biocon, and a host of others that aren't mentioned because the screen is too small. But now, how do we make this the epicenter of discovery? That's the question. And here's the reality check. We lost a great innovator this last year. Steve Jobs holding up his iPhone. Uh, two days ago, Mark Zuckerberg took Facebook public. He owes, I think, $1.5 billion in income taxes. Good for him. We wish him, we wish him well. But the question Kieran asked was, what comprises the ecosystem that will spawn discovery? And we heard just from Terry a moment ago the words disruptive innovation. The father of that theory is Clayton Christensen. He's a Harvard professor at Harvard University. He has suffered cancer, a stroke, diabetes, and he survives even till today. But here's what he thinks is the ecosystem that we all need to be focusing on. And I'll review each of these quickly and individually. But youth, obviously a young nation, someone thinking outside the box, a dynamic culture, someone that's a little bit anti-establishment, like Dr. M.K. Bond. Diverse education system, a dizzying array of choice and opportunity. Capital liquidity. We heard Kiran Mazumda Shah today talk about a NASDAQ-like exchange that will enable people to go to the market and raise money. A proactive government, and we have one here in the government of Karnataka. Infrastructure. Dr. M.K. Bond just mentioned such an important aspect. An inviting climate. We've just stepped outdoors. Is there any more perfect climate than Bangalore? And then, of course, entrepreneurial risk-taking. Let me quickly just run through this. Ranga de Basanti, uh, the whole idea of youth, 70% of India's 1.2 billion population under the age of 35, 54% under the age of 25. Talk about youthful energy, thinking outside the box, willing to take risk and chances. And then overlay that with the dynamic culture of Karnataka. And I show you the Vijayanagar Empire down in the lower left-hand corner. Mr. K.K. Heber, a great artist who is the Picasso of all of India. Shivram Karant, one of the great philosophers and environmentalists. And then bottom right-hand corner, uh, that is the Brigade Road and MG Road intersection. Is there any better melting pot anywhere on the planet than Brigade Road on MG Road in Karnataka, Bangalore. And then look at the Indian flag. Saffron for Hindu, white for Christian, green for Muslim. In other words, a secular pluralist nation, a melting pot. Ideas are mixing in this dynamic culture. Entrepreneurial risk-taking, my God, the room is filled with them. Kiran Mazumda Shah, KV Kamath at ICICI Bank from Mangalore, Azim Premji from Wipro, Dr. Varendra Hegede in a different form, about reaching out with microfinancing to the rural villages. And Narayanan Murti, and of course, Nanda Nilakani, and the fame that is now emphasis. And I take you to the bottom of the screen, Kiran, and I remind everybody that it was in India, in Karnataka, in Dakshina, Canada, where the first private banking industry was begun in this country. Syndicate bank, et cetera. Mm. Corporation bank, Vijaya bank, et cetera and the first private educational institutions in India, Manipal University, as well as the Nite Education Trust. So this is a dynamical, dynamic group of risk takers that live in Karnataka. And then perfect climate, that's Viran Suda, and it looks that good even today. This is not a touched up photograph. And then think about Kabini, think about the Carvery, think about Bandipur, think about the Nogaris at sunset, think about Orange County and Korg, and think about one of the most important biospheres in the world, in the Western Ghats, and then the name of this city, the Garden City. Bangalore is the capital of a perfect climate, very much like Palo Alto in Silicon Valley. And then access to capital, 
you know, there seems to be in India no shortage of money. People talk about crores and crores of rupees like it's nothing. I wish I had one crore. <laughs> but here we are now really needing to raise venture capital, low cost money, low cost loans, private equity. That's a bit more challenging, and that goes to the op-ed that Kieran put into the newspapers the other day. We'll talk about that in a moment. And in terms of educational choice, I show you a picture of California with a bullseye at Palo Alto. And within 100 kilometers of Palo Alto, look at the educational choice. From the upper right-hand corner, University of San Francisco, University of California, Berkeley, Cal Poly, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, Monterey Institute of International Studies, Stanford Universities, I believe one of Kieran's nephews is attending, NASA, and then of course the Defense Language Institute. I'm not suggesting that California is any better than Karnataka, but certainly we need to be thinking about strengthening the diversity, the dizzying array of educational choice surrounding Bangalore, Karnataka. That is a central aspect to the ecosystem of innovation. And then infrastructure. M.K. Bond mentioned the infrastructure issue. Well, we all know that it's happening. And congratulations to Government of Karnataka on the new airport. Congratulations on the new metro going down the MG road, although that is controversial in terms of its, uh, whether it fits into the environment. But Karnataka is on the move in terms of infrastructure development. The country itself, 150,000 megawatts of new power required, 25 new airports needing to be built, 25 existing airports needing to be upgraded, a brand new air force that's underway, 20,000 kilometers of new roads in the Golden Quadrilateral, a deep water blue navy that will be looking after the Bay of Bengal and the Straits of Malacca and fighting the pirates in Somalia and keeping an eye on the Chinese submarines. And then of course, 20,000 megawatts of new nuclear power that's going to be developed between the United States, India, France, and other countries. And the need to add 12 more ports to the existing 12 major ports. $1.7 trillion price tag, and therefore the challenge of infrastructure, as MK Bond mentioned, is a major, major challenge. And why did we push so hard for the opening of the retail sector? And Kieran, if I can indulge you on this picture, I want you to imagine this as the healthcare system, the healthcare delivery system, and how it's going to involve massive investment similar to the farm to market supply chain in the retail sector. That reminds me of pictures not too far outside of Tamil Nadu or outside of Bangalore. And these reminds me of not too unfamiliar a picture outside of Gurgaon on the way to Haryana. And then when I think about the Mangalorean fish crop in the harvest, we're still preserving the fish on ice. There's not enough cold storage. In Haryana, North India, you have stacks and stacks of grain. And then we have our lovely day markets, we have our lovely night markets, but in the end, we need organized distribution. And if you imagine those images in the healthcare delivery system, you can appreciate that it's going to take investment all along the healthcare delivery system, just like along the farm to market supply chain system, and that's going to mean collaboration and the invitation of companies like GE to partner with Indian companies in making the major, major investments in research and development and innovation. 